question, I now ask Manuel Fieber to conclude the whole debate. Mr. President, thank you very much for the privilege and listening to this debate, real pleasure um, of speaking tonight, especially on the eve of an Oxford Union election. And thank you all um, for being here. We've just heard passionate, scientific, personal stories and facts. I would like to base my argument on three different arguments tonight, based on what we have heard tonight. My first is ethics. We've heard a lot about morals and ethics, so I would like to take you on an ethical journey of why you would want to vote with the opposition tonight. My second is scale. We've heard a lot about factory farming, but we've also heard about regenerative agriculture, or we'll hear a bit about that. And thirdly, culture. And I was very, very pleased that the proposition brought up several points that will be really, really interesting, in my eyes, to dissect. First, ethics. It's brilliant to see the proposition take such a moral high ground in this debate tonight. I would say, contrary to Carol's white supremacy of eating meat argument, that I would argue that veganism can be considered an ideology as well, a Western liberal agenda that feels on a moral high ground. So the Western liberal agenda, should we really question the ethics of driving up demand for crops that require high inputs of fertilizer, fungicides, pesticides, herbicides, and so on and so forth, as well as, as we've also heard earlier, um, the killing of, of smaller animals and the destroying of habitats for them. So, thank you. Um, really, it's detrimental for the environment either way. Whether or not um, that is exceeded by that of the meat industry if you only produce crops and cereals, that's um, unlikely, I would assume. So, thinking about this, especially on Thanksgiving, which is today, um, it is rather striking that meat eaters are being shamed for eating meat in the 21st century. That really is about removing shame. Um, it's fine um, if, if, if you live your life today. It's fine who you marry today, fortunately. Um, so why wouldn't it fine for us to eat meat? Why are we inventing a new type of shame, if you will, um, instead of accepting each other for, for who we are? Doesn't it feel like an agenda to you, especially on Thanksgiving Day? I don't know how many of you had to miss Thanksgiving invites tonight. I have one at my house um, that I can't attend because I'm passionately um, defending, at least sometimes, consuming meat. And that goes to my point of, of Heather um, earlier saying she's evangelical about, um, uh, about being vegan, which your passion really showed. Um, and I, I thought that was brilliant. And it did remind me um, of, of, a, of a popular joke, and I hope no one takes offense to that, but um, how can you tell if someone is vegan? Well, don't worry, they will tell you. <laughs> I did find it rather striking, however, um, that there was a comparison made between dairy and, and, and opium addiction, and later, Carol equating meat eating to being an anti-abortionist. I find that um, rather crass, and I'm not sure I agree. I, in fact, I disagree. Um, and this is in no way trying to discredit any of both of your incredible contributions to nutrition and, and um, discourse, societal discourse. But, ladies and gentlemen, do not 
let the proposition tonight convince you that you are a bad person because you want to enjoy a turkey tonight or eat a steak over the weekend. Meat isn't inherently bad at all, and it shouldn't be villainized, as Michaela said earlier. Um, I believe it's quite useful to deconstruct meat into the two understandings um, of it links to this idea of, of scale that I will go into. Yes, some forms of its production in the contemporary landscape are unsustainable, factory farming, but the consumption and the potential place of meat isn't intrinsically wrong or damaging. The proposition side may have you believe that, and it again misunderstands, that meat is a capitalist identity or part of a capitalist identity. Um, and to that, really all of the identities, it makes it implicit, which is, which is quite unfair. My, so my second point was about scale and reframing the debate away from, from being um, polarizing and, and polemical, which I apparently did not um, really succeed in. It's, it's really um, a matter of scale and balancing the, the ecological equation, which um, does not necessitate the abolition of, of animal food sources. Um, when, and that's, this is a scientific study doing a biophysical simulation model to calculate human carrying capacity under 10 different diet scenarios. Peters et al. in 2016 saw that the carrying capacity was generally higher for scenarios with less meat. However, the carrying capacity of the vegan diet was lower than the two omnivore diet scenarios. So that, that um, is a point of it being in relation to scale. Factory farming, which we've all agreed tonight, is not the way forward, but abolishing meat altogether um, is not either. And my third point on culture, and thank you for bringing that up, um, when, I heard, um, when I heard the earlier point on, on pasture that, that um, Peter brought up, I was immediately reminded of my um, upbringing and of Psalm 23, um, where we are asked to be led to green pasture, um, which I thought felt a great segue to, um, to the cultural argument um, I would like to make. And interestingly, um, Heather brought up the, um, the Inuit, um, who she is or was helping in creating alternative food sources. Um, it's important to understand that while veganism may serve as a seminal form of identity formation, um, it fails to apply that same metric to the consumption of animal products which are um, in, in a cultural sense. So food can serve as an important vehicle in the production of meaning and identity for a culture on the vegan side, but also on the side of um, consuming meat. One way, for example, the Inuit generate meaning is by situating themselves, their actions, and the objects they use and consume within a spectrum of dichotomies distinguishing the world of Inuit from the world of and I'm going to mispronounce this, so apologies, Kualunat, which refers to the white people or the people of Euro-Canadian descent. So the way in which Inuit describe a particular way of eating as being typically Inuit or a certain food as typically white people food reveals how Inuit objectify, institutionalize, and even reify a world of objects and practices that in their case includes the consumption of meat. I also support, and I'm sorry that didn't come through as clearly, um, Indigenous Peoples Day, um, but I also support not denying people to eat what they want. So in a way, the earlier argument um, made by, by Carol did sound to me as well as a somewhat pseudo-colonial form of oppression to suppress cultural tradition and rituals, such as the ones just described in the case of the Inuit that Heather also mentioned um, earlier. And a vote rejecting meat tonight is also a vote of cultural erasure. 
I know I'm keeping you from enjoying your steaks, Thanksgiving dinners, um, beyond meat burgers, uh, whatever it is. So my three arguments, along with my fellow opposition speakers, were about ethics, that it's fine to eat meat and you're not a bad person for doing so, about scale, it is largely the problem with industrial farming, and thirdly, that it's culturally insensitive to forbid people or urge people not to consume meat. So whatever you eat, and I think, I believe, you have the freedom to eat whatever you like, make sure it's all part of a balanced diet, as advised by your physicians and nutritionists, just like voting with the opposition is tonight. Thank you very much. <laughs>